happened there. So we don't know what happened, guys. Come back and see me. You're very, very welcome, of course. This happened last week. And a little bit of a nuisance because it just means that you've got two parts to watch when you're watching Scotty McClue live. You need the two parts. All right. But I shall always come back to you. I shall always do my best to come back to you. Very, very important. I mean, obviously, it's heartbreaking when that happens. It just stops, I suppose, it's just a fail, and you get that. But here we are back, and that's excellent. Lovely to have you with me. Scotty McClue with you saying dinky doo. We've got about another 15 minutes to go, guys. So excellent stuff. Stick with me as much as you possibly can. A very, very popular program tonight. And uh, it's very, very interesting how the whole thing just freezes up. We're maybe in the early days. So excellent stuff. But lovely to have you with us. And uh, can you all hear me? Can you all see me? Uh, are you? Hey, you went, Scotty, says Stephen Weymouth. I know, Stephen, it just stopped. It said it was going to resume. And then it came on and said, go live again. So that's that. So it's just part of life. Gremlins again, Scotty, says John Brown. Obviously, John, just one of these things. But uh, we have to live with it. The only thing I will say to you, and you were awfully good about it last week, because we had thousands of people watched last week. Share for the whole week, guys. When you see anything with Scotty McClure on it, just share it, all right? That or a poor internet connection, says Jonathan Darwin. I don't, the internet connection seems to be absolutely fine. Yes, Gremlins again, there we are. And uh, it might be something to do um, with the, uh, the Facebook connection or something like that. It could be anything. This is the only thing I would say. I'm used to solid stake technology, solid state, not stake, solid state technology. Uh, the old ISDN and things like that. But even that could trip out. I remember getting on to uh, to the provider uh, with the ISDN and saying, is Scotty McClue here? We have a problem. They said, no problem, sir. We will sort that. And they took off like rockets to the cabinet to sort out the Scotty McClue show. Uh, I can remember that. And I can remember also the geniuses at uh, the wonderful Radio Clyde when I was doing a show to Radio Forth and um, the geniuses at Radio Clyde said that they could provide it if I could get through to the studio. Terrific stuff. We can hear you loud and proud, says Karen Reynolds. Cutting off all the time, says Anne-Marie Crone. You're back on now, Scotty. Back to the slip roads, Scotty. A mate of mine actually got a ticket for changing lanes and letting someone on from a slip road uh, by a cop. So there you are. Well, no. <clears throat> it shouldn't do when the motorway is moving. If you can keep the motorway moving, I think that's excellent. There's Ali Heening. Good morning from Australia. Good morning, Ali. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky do. I can only apologise. Circumstances way beyond my control, but it means that this week's show will be in two parts. But I shall make that clear. Um, I had a solid steak. <laughs> Excellent stuff. We like solid state. The old solid state technology. Sorry, I'm breaking these teeth in for somebody else. Uh, Michael Yule's watching. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky do, Michael. Great stuff. Very, very important. What a fantastic program it's been tonight, guys. I really do congratulate you all for helping to build this wonderful program. But uh, I got great um, comments last week. Uh, Mark Andrews, the Scotty McClure Show makes Sunday night earning a real pleasure, says Mark. Mark, thank you for that. Dinky doo, glad to know you're at the earning. Have you got the steam iron? So there, all that stuff. <clears throat> I, I remember actually um, the missus left the steam iron on the back of her knickers and it took a panel out, it took a, a bottom panel. Uh, not a bottom, you know, a bottom, I mean a bottom, took one of the panels out. So there, I mean, what a cheek. So there you are, that's what happened. Uh, God and Elric, dinky do, lovely to have you with us, of course. And David Fisher, Kevin MacDonald, come and join us. You're very, very welcome. I hope all you guys didn't just disappear there because there was a, a wee glitch. Very naughty. Uh, get yourselves back on. So there we are. What have we got here? Um... Yes. Oh, wonderful. That's what it's telling me. So there you go. Ah, I can see. Yes. Um, so there we are. Is it time for a fag break yet, Scotty? Says Dina the Doug. 
And of course, I haven't smoked for um, 19 years, do you know the dog? And you shouldn't either. All right. So no, it's not time for a fag break. And make sure you never inhale. Uh, Barry still uses the old cast iron on the fire, says Stephen. That's right, the black irons on the fire. You left them up in the fire till they were red hot. Then you picked them up, you put a cloth round because the handle was hot as well. Cast iron irons. They were very, very good flat irons. Yes, the flat iron. Very good because if you look at pictures, I mean, I look at pictures of my grandfather who was born in 1881. You know, and I look at pictures of that and his parents, they're a big family. His parents were married in 1861. So there you are. And his father was born in, I suppose it'd be around 1840. Amazing. So there you are. Uh, I've not smoked for five years, says Louise Sullivan. Louise Sullivan, that is outstanding. That is fantastic. Nor should you. Very, very important. If anybody's a smoker, then come on, let us know and we'll get you off the fags, guys. We'll not nag you or anything. We'll just get you off the fags because we care. See, another thing I care about, it's quite interesting, is swearing on the likes of Facebook. Now, when I had my own uh, forum on the Scotty McClue website, www.scotty-mcclue.com, if you go on there, you can PayPal or GoFundMe. And uh, thank you to everybody who has, by the way. And uh, the swearing used to annoy me, so I would filter the words. So if somebody said a naughty word, it came out as maybe love or kiss. So somebody say, he can go and take a kiss. So all that sort of stuff. Very, very interesting. Scotty, were you smoking when you were in Scott FM? No, I wasn't, Charles. That was when I gave up, because it was very difficult to get through a three-hour show um, if, if you were smoking. Three-hour talk show. Now, we do a one-hour talk show on a Sunday night. If you imagine this three times every single night, five nights a week, Monday to Friday. There we are on Scott FM. I don't smoke, but I vape. Not great, but better than fags. Well, we don't know that yet, Jonathan, you know. You're still sucking chemicals into your lung. If uh, if you can stop it, that would be tremendous. I funded you, and I'll do it again soon, says Louise Sullivan. Louise Sullivan, you have. You're very, very generous, and I thank you for that. Very kind of you. There we are, into www.scotty-mcclue.com. If you prefer PayPal, you'll get the PayPal there, paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue, all one word, or gofundme.com forward slash Scotty-mcclue. comes up, time flies like an arrow, fruit flies like a banana. So they, yes, I'm just looking at the time here. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, Scotty, I've noticed a very strange anomaly at the wee path or the walk around Linlithgow Palace. It's a narrow path. I walk it regularly with my two kids. And we've noticed that uh, when two ladies are... Don't know what the rest is, Douglas, because I didn't press see more or we could lose the broadcast again. I smoke like a chimney, the Rab Hill. Well, stop it, Rab Hill. If God had meant you to smoke, he'd have put a chimney in your head. All right. And uh, the wonderful Mike Henfield, dinky do to you. Lovely to have you with us, sir. Good to hear your voice, Scotty. I used to listen back in the early 90s on Red Rose Radio in Lancashire, says Paul Smith. Is it Smith or Smythe, Paul? You let me know. It's uh, S M Y. But some people like Smith, some people like Smythe. Uh, so there we are. Lovely. Yes, the early 90s. Red Rose Radio in Lancashire. A fantastic station run by the, the brilliant Mike Henfield. Wonderful journalist. Great broadcaster. And a wonderful, wonderful radio manager. And of course, uh, the station was so well run. Very profitable station. Um, there we go. Scotty, do you like the Marx Brothers films? They're nearly a hundred years old. And they're fantastic. I do. I love the Marx Brothers. And when I was wee, Groucho was still around. I don't know if the others were. But you could see Groucho on television. There we are. It was, I thought, that's Groucho Marx. Funny, funny man. Great comedy still. And of course, Harpo. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful playing. And Chico. And uh, so who have you got? Your Groucho, Harpo, Chico, and... Chico and come on 
Give me the last one. Who knows the name of the, the Marx brother of Mr. Groucho Harpo Chico? Uh, tried once was sick, decided it wasn't for me, says James Boyle. The smoking, quite right. Uh, did you get the fruit fly joke, says Neil O'Gormley? I will do, Neil. I maybe didn't get it. I was probably busy trying to rescue the broadcast. I loved it when you roasted the smokers. I haven't smoked for 30 years, but I do enjoy a tipple, says Charles McLaughlin. Absolutely, Charles McLaughlin, we do. And I mean, I am quite a, um, an authority on whiskies, but I don't drink now. So there you are. Don't know what's worse, 40 fags a day or a deep fried uh, bar, says Jonathan Tarwin. Pronounced Smith, says Paul Smith. Excellent. Good, we got it right, Paul. Zeppo, says Gary Cross. Of course it was. So you had Harpo, Chico, Groucho and Zeppo. Silly me, forgetting Zeppo. Wonderful stuff. Was, uh, was Zeppo the, the guy with the sort of triangular hat? Um, I've got my royal wedding invitation, but I can't go, says Ian Walker. He says he never would. You would. You'd be off like a shot, Ian Walker, because you are a frustrated harpy. You are a, a frustrated elite. So that's it. That's the stuff. And you love the royals. You just uh, don't quite understand them. So there you are. They're really quite frugal. The way the royal family live, they're tremendous. And the Queen, of course, is an absolute angel, absolute gem. What about Prince Philip at 97? Is that right? He's coming up. Is he 97? No, he'll be 97 in June, I think, if I remember right. So he's in his 97th year, just at a hip replacement, and wonderful stuff. Waving to everybody the other day. Lol, says Ian Walker. Uh, did Zeppo make cigarette lighters? Steve Weymouth. No, that's Zippo. What are you all like? Right, who's got the time for goodness sake? I can't see what these clocks saying. There we are. I don't know what's going on here. Tremendous stuff. Not to worry, it doesn't actually matter. So there you are. Two things. It doesn't actually matter what time it is. Jonathan Darwin, dinky-doo, big thumbs up to you. Sid Devine's watching. Lovely to have you with us, Sid. And dinky-doo to you. Frugal Scotty, what are you smoking? Says he walking, no, you don't understand it, Ian. There's the state, and then there's the royal family. And there's the royal family privately, and they're really quite frugal. We've got a small farmhouse in the Sandringham estate. That's one of their homes, and Prince Philip, just before he had his hip operation, was planning a new kitchen for it. So there you are. Nearly light suit, says Ian Walker. Zippo, I thought he was the rainbow. No, that's Zippy. Jeffrey, George, Bungle and Zippy were all in Rainbow. So there you are. What are your thoughts on the new series of Game On? Is it Game On or still Game? What we're we talking about, Jonathan. So there you are. Jonathan Darwin, uh, let us know if you've got the right title. It's about the time the Queen called it a day. She works too hard, says Dave Burroughs. Well, Prince Philip has certainly cut down. He's in what you would call semi-retirement at the age of 97. Her Majesty will be 93 this year. I think I've got that right. Um, no, 92. Is that right? Was it 1926 she was born? So 92. Is that right? Have I got that right? She'll be 92 this year. Yes. Uh, sorry, fat fingers, says John Darwin. We're all the same, Jonathan. Uh, I had that predictive text. Wasn't getting a single word right. So there you are. That's how it was helping me. Uh, Scotty, what is that paladin behind you? So there you are. You're talking about the um, picture. So there we go. There you go. That's McClure with Lord Reith, absolutely, in all his finery. And uh, I've got mine on as well. Uh, so excellent stuff. What a fantastic program tonight, guys. I do sincerely apologize for the interruption to transmission beyond our control. So there we are. Phone Scotty, speak your mind, says Rab. Absolutely, Rab. Anne Ingalls, watching Dinky Doo, Anne. Lovely to hear from you, and I hope you are well. And I hope himself is as well. So there you are. Ian Whitelaw, of course, watching as well. Tremendous stuff. Right, uh, what are we doing time-wise? Because I've completely lost track of the time here. Um, tell me what the actual time is, guys, if you don't mind. Uh, stop Philip's money because he's no working, says Dino the Dog. Dino, don't be ridiculous. That man has given his life in the service of his country.
So there you are. So a few quid is no compensation for that. I can tell you she's 91, says Charles McLaughlin, the Queen. No, she's more than 91, Charles. She must be 92. It's 9.30, says Rab. Stop it, Rab. Uh, I, 92, double the lifespan of people from Shettleston. So saying, well, the people from Shettleston need to give up the booze, give up the fags, and get themselves nice and fit and be a credit to Shettleston, I say. So there we are. What we're needing is jobs for the people of Shettleston. I've said it before. Now, there's talk of Brexit. When Brexit happens, London will no longer be the financial capital of the world. All right. Now, what I think should happen there is Scotland should go independent and Greenock or Glasgow becomes the financial capital of the world. Right. Mrs. Thatcher, uh, she took all the money down to London and robbed Scotland blind. So there you are. And we need that money back. So Shettleston, everybody should have the chance of work and the chance of a job. I'm definitely not a royalist, and I find the idea that someone should lord it over anyone else simply by right of birth absolutely preposterous, does Gillian Mackenzie. Well, no, you don't understand, Gillian. We need a head of state. We need somebody who's a keeper of the crown. And they're not actually lording it over us. So there you are. I wouldn't uh, thank you for that job. She's 92 this month. Yes, April, that's right. April the 26th. Am I correct? Is the Queen's birthday, the Queen's actual birthday, April the 26th, 1926. Am I correct? Uh, so she's born 21st, or oh, 21st, sorry, 1926, so that's it. April the 21st. I was five days out, not too bad. Tell you, Scotty, the times are changing. Shettleston will be the financial capital of the world. I'd like Greenock to be the financial capital of the world, because Greenock is a place that suffered tremendously, as has Kilmarnock and Paisley, and all these places. The Queen has two birthdays a year. She looks good for 182, says Dean of the Duck. She's got her official birthday in June when we have the tripping of the colour. Of course, tremendous stuff. So there you go. So two birthdays. We like that. But uh, no, no. The Queen and Prince Philip have been tremendous to this country. And I have got a lot of time for them. I understand about it seems preposterous. But once you understand the whole royal thing, there's no... Uh, preposterosity about it. Preposterousness. We could make money worthless and see if we removed money. Would the world change for the better? Well, you would need exchange. You see, if you look at it, you used to have bills of exchange, and a bill of exchange is an unconditional order in writing drawn on one person and made payable to another. And then if you have a check, a check is a bill of exchange drawn on a banker and payable either on demand or at some determinable time in the future. Then you can go to the likes of um, the Maoris in New Zealand used to have wampum, wampum, and that was their currency. It was shells, Maori shells. So there you are. Paisley best tune of Scotland, says Neil O'Gormley. It's too wet in Greenock, says Ian Walker. Well, it is a wee bit wet, but I mean, Scotland's a wee bit wet. It seems to have bucketed for the last two years. <clears throat> when I met um, Noah, I said, he said, it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights. I said, Noah, we're on 84 nights already. So there you go. If you're from Greenock, you can't actually see your webbed feet from here. So there we are. Excellent stuff. Right. Uh, what's the time? It must be time to go. Can I phone in and say it's 10 o'clock? And time for the news. You can dinner the duck. McLear is going. So there we are. We could use sheep and cows, says Tim Rigby. That's right. Give you some sheep, give you some cows. Scotty McClue has to go. We are right out of time. What a fabulous program tonight, I say. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great week. Thoroughly enjoy yourselves. Share McClue as much as you can. Spread the word. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. If you feel I'm worth a couple of pounds, get yourselves on to the GoFundMe or the PayPal. You'll see it on Scotty McClue's official website at www.scotty-mcclue.com. You'll be in the company of 10 million other people. If they'd all sent in a quid, 
we would be in business. The Paisley pattern was invented by two Glaswegians fighting over a tie. Here we go, Scotty. Glasgow's blue and white, all that stuff. Yes, very good. Come on the hoops as well. We've got to balance it up. Thanks, Scotty. Brilliant as usual, says Charles McLachlan. Know the song, says Ian Walker. News flash, Ian Walker. The song. Are we all ready after two? Two. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of wheat or zane, au revoir, and a cheerio. Au revoir, everybody, dinky-doo, and a cheerio, dinky-doo. Scotty McClue has left the building.